What's up, y'all? What's up? What's going on? 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 Uh, um, you go over here to the comment section. What's up, y'all? About to get started here in just a minute. Click that, click that top button right there, bro. No, that right there. No, that one. Comment. Boom. What up, what up, what up, what up, what up, what up, what up? What's the deal? What's the deal? Um Man, let me tell you. It's one thing that I have missed is uh is miss coming to you guys properly. Um then talking to you. Um we've got through so much together. Um and I hate that I have left you guys um, behind. Part of uh, part of just being a man is uh, is understanding a key point. Uh, I was raised by my father, and my grandfather, and my great grandfather were heavily in my life, and. Uh, I mean, I can't tell you how good it feels to be here to talk to you. Um, with that being said, with my background, I was held to a different standard. Um, for those of you who are fans of the podcast, a narcotics officer was killed today serving a high-risk warrant in Echo Park. Yeah, we back up in this thing. Um, but I got some real real shit I got to say to you guys uh, first before we, before we play. Uh, before we talk, this is uh this is probably gonna be one of the uh, most difficult things, but the most cleansing things I've I've ever had a chance to do. Um, shit does get deeper. My father, my grandfather, and even my mother, uh, my family, the Sorrells family, um, just different cloth. And um, when you raise and you cut from a different cloth, when you raised up with certain standards and morals, you held to a different, uh, you held to a di different degree of um, accountability. Accountability is a mature concept, man. Um, and it's hard because everybody does not want to be accountable. And there has been so much going back on, so much happening. Um, I couldn't start I couldn't start the journey off right and proper without stepping into a place of accountability. Um hurt people hurt people. Hurt people definitely hurt people. And um one thing as as black men that we don't always have a chance to do is admit when we're hurting. We don't have a chance to uh admit when we are down and we don't always have a safe space to go to and uh most of the time it's because when we go in these safe spaces the things that we divulge the things that we open up about sometimes come back to hit us in the face sometimes those things that are our kryptonite are used just as that to to cri cripple us um and, and in that and in that, man, like, you know, there's some other things that we have to, to face. And, and those are um, your fears. Over the past year and a half, you guys have watched me go through some of the heaviest things I've ever gone through in my life. Um, you guys have been there for me. Um, but I can't come in here and come to you. And not be real about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't come in here and not be honest about it. I can't come in here and and not be transparent about it. Like, we've grown through so much in these last six years of life. Um, that step one, rule one is uh, accountability. I've made some decisions. I've I've lost a lot. But what you saw me move in, guys, 
was in a position of hurt, a position of anger. You saw me moving in a position of like, you know what I'm saying? Fear. Now, some of y'all be like, I'm fearless. But when you really fearless, those fearless moments when I was truly fearless in my life, my character didn't fold. My principles didn't change. My values didn't go away. And that's where I was able to stand solid at. Um, accountability, dog. God damn it, I can't I can't hear sit here and say it enough that I have over the last year and a half to four years of my life lacked some major accountability as a man. And that's a dangerous thing because when you got a man that's in control, a man that's leading people who lacks accountability, you are putting people in a collision course with disaster to have crash after crash after crash with nobody, with nobody, with nobody um, taking accountability, bro. Like I can go step by step. Situation by situation, some of you guys have seen me um, even over the last couple of days, last couple of weeks in my relationship that I was in. And. Um, it's been so much I didn't know where to start. And uh, one thing I can encourage you about with being accountable is understanding when you wound it. Hardest thing that I had to do was really get to a point where I say, okay, now it's time to try and heal, bro. So with that, going and getting the proper help, like mental help, like, bro, black men, we go through trauma. We live in a world with trauma. We live in a world where we are looked at as casualties and it is our responsibility and ours alone to take responsibility of what is our mental health. It's our responsibility. It's, it's nobody else's. That's accountability, bro. And like, it's your responsibility for your, for your, for your, Mental sanity. Nobody else's. And if you need help with it, you got to have the people around you to love you and you have to be willing to take that help. Like, I took some major losses and still was pushing through. And, you know, like, I got to start with. I've had to make some major decisions about what's most important in my life and bringing peace and, uh, Peace is most important right now. First of all, I like the video. I need to get them likes up because um, this is important. Um, I've dropped the ball. I, I moved in fear and not in faith. Bro, I was raised in the church, bro. I was raised with faith. I was raised to be able to stand tall in adversity and in adverse situations. And when you move in a position of fear or out of hurt you're not making the best decisions you're not fully thinking about what's going on around you my daddy would say he say you running but you're running scared and he's like when you play chess when you play football you can't play football scared you got to play football in your brain and you have to make the mental decisions, those mental mental mistakes that you let go of all start with knowing and understanding what your objective is. And sometimes, bro, when you take too many shots, you got to come take a knee. Um, I, I used to do it a lot. And it's something I hadn't done in a while until I was with one of my partners. And uh, I needed to take a knee and help. And, help. and uh, taking that knee, it's not a position of weakness. There's some powerful things that you can do on a knee. Um, you can pray. You can propose. You can prepare. 
for battle. People people discount that third thing. They think because you're on a knee that you're submitted, but you are submitted. You got to realize that there's a power in this world that's bigger than you, that there's a purpose at stake that's bigger than you, that you are a mortal and you can be destroyed physically, but spiritually and principally, you can be unbreakable. And uh, sometimes that gets lost because we just worry about what our body wants, what our flesh wants, what our heart wants, what, what we desire truly in our hearts. And um, bro, if there was ever a time to tell you that we are not fucking invincible, that there is a, a, a moment when we must face and understand our mortality. I've lost so many friends, man. Uh, R.P. my nigga Don J. R.P. my nigga Big D. R.P. my nigga Teddy Ray. <sighs> R.P. my nigga Fu Quan, who sat on that couch, man. Um, like, R.I.P. my nigga Marcus Combs. Like, bro, these is real people. Real lives. And, man, the number one thing that you have to do is when you, when you understand that you got a mortality at stake, you got to go take a, a reevaluation of what you put your priority on. Um... Some of you guys saw what happened with me and Didi. I'm going to say this on this podcast. Didi will forever be my brother. Didi will forever be my brother. Um, R.I.P. Nick Carton, man. Um, Fool will forever be my brother. Um... We as a family, not just on this podcast, but in, on, on our platforms, our families, we're fathers. D-Lay and his sons, uh, Fool and his sons and his daughters and his granddaughters, me with my children, my daughters and my, my now my son. Um, like, bro, we are... Uh, we're responsible for some lives and we have to really understand where we where we're going with this and what we do and how it impacts them i went through my divorce with coco man and probably one of the hardest things to go through but my last relationship that i was in with aaron uh Help me understand some things and put some things in proper perspective. Help me understand that fear cannot overtake me. And although I've not seek validation from a group of people, having a woman at my side, having somebody to be there for me has been a subconscious validation that I've relied upon. And it, it just, it can't be like, as men, if we're going to lead these relationships, if we're going to lead these households, if we're going to lead these families, we have to be prepared to make the ultimate sacrifice. Not just your life, but give up the things that we need so that our family can get there. And if that sometimes means, hey, I got to give up having a mate so that we can keep the peace and civility and we can have a, a, a god field like positive environment and space to raise our family and lead with then uh shit we got to make the sacrifice one thing i had to go back to was uh my father definitely told me that let say son life is not going to be fair as a man you're going to make sacrifices you're not going to uh You're not going to always get your way. He said, but that's not what life about. Um, and in this process, man, going through this relationship and restarting love over again, and you'll see some of that. And then losing some of my close friends, Don J and Teddy. Uh, it was a quick reminder that life is too short.
and, and I realized that in order to bring things full circle and bring them around, I had to heal some of the things that were destroyed and damaged. Um, patience. I wrote a list of words that uh, I wrote a list of words that uh that that I needed to work on. And I I went through my phone, and I searched the words. Uh, I started with the word love. I started with the word love, and uh, I looked at how many people in my phone expressed how they loved me. I looked at how many people in my phone express uh, that they care for me, and I looked at. A key word that I put in this is this, how many of those people that said that they love me was I being accountable for? And um, integrity, decency, maturity, leadership, courage, reliability. Security, empathy, and most importantly, respect. I have lacked these words. I've lacked these words because I was afraid to give and not get that back. See, that's the fear part. It's not just the part of giving it. It's the fear that the people that you give it to won't give it back. And that's not the principle at all. You can't control none of that. Um, I've lost everything that some people might seem as everything, but I've lost nothing when it comes to the things that is everything to me. I'm going to say that again. I've lost everything in the eyes of the people who think I have everything, but I've lost nothing that is everything to me. My children, my family are in good health. Um, their minds are growing and developing. I still have time. You know what I mean? So like, when it comes to that, this conversation that I'm having, be very clear, this isn't specifically for the fans. This conversation is for them because they need to know the day as much as they've seen their father do a lot of stuff. They need to know the day that their father sat down and said, hey, you know what? I did some things and I did some things incorrectly. I did some things and I didn't move how I should. Hey, son. It's like I watched my dad. Tell his dad, hey, man, I made a mistake. Like I watched my granddaddy tell my great grandfather, hey, man, I made a mistake. I need my daughters and my sons and in some of you guys to see it's OK to make a mistake. It's OK to make a mistake and own up to it. So. Uh, Fellas, be honest with you. Like, protect your peace. Your mental peace. Some stuff ain't worth fighting for. Because you know why? Um, you only got one brain. You only got one brain. And you got one soul. And if you stay in a space of constant battle, not just with yourself, but with the world around you, you're going to deteriorate your soul. You're going to deplete your brain. You're going to deplete the life force that you was made to be here. Nobody was put here to just stay at constant war. We're not demons, fam. We're loving creatures. 
And even when you don't get that love back or even when you face that rejection or even when you face those adverse moments, realize that finding your own peace is probably the most valuable thing that you can seek out. Like, bruh, look around. Y'all think shit getting better out here? Shit ain't getting better. Things won't get better the way that we think that they should. Because we only got control of three things. Our thoughts, our words, and our actions. Our thoughts, our words, and our actions are things that we do. You know, my last relationship, I wanted to uh, push accountability, and I did. I wanted to reinforce with positivity, and I did. Uh, but then I didn't. I got tired. Um, I got frustrated. I got scared that I wasn't going to get back what I was putting in. And part of having the word faith and not fear is understanding that. Hey, bro, we don't own none of this stuff. Although I love my kids, I don't own them. So they're not my property. I'm supposed to love and care for them, but... I don't own time either. If God called me home tomorrow like he didn't call some of my friends home, I'm going to have to accept with no choice that the world and those around him was uh, was all they're going to have left. Like, it's funny is like, y'all know me. And the pauses that I'm taking are really because I'm not thinking about right now. I'm thinking about in a year, in five years, in 10 years, in three weeks, when somebody comes to this and they're hanging on each word trying to figure out which way they're going, am I helping them find their way back? Like, y'all see me go to war. War is over. War is done. That go for 50 Cent. That go for D-Lay. That go for Courtney. That goes that goes for Aaron. That goes for anybody that you think I might be at odds with. Just let, hey, man. Hey, it's my 40th year on this earth. And I got some major healing to do. And I got some major fixing to do. And as I stand here and I got to look back at everything, we're going to go step by step, situation by situation, how we do it. And I'm going to break this shit down to you the best way I know how. Story by story, line by line, moment by moment, person by person. And I'm going to walk you through the last year and a half of what the hell been going on. I'm truly going to take y'all around the world. And drop y'all ass off. I'm truly. Going to give you. With all my heart. The diary of. Not just my life. But those around me. This is the best storytelling podcast in the world. This is the Did You Miss Me podcast. Long live Teddy Ray. Teddy Ray. Long live you. So, without further ado, we back up in this thing. Hey, yo, Diddy! Hey, yo, fool! Hey, yo, E! Hey, Osamo! 
Oh, Ma! Hey, yo, Blair! Coco! Dange! Kali! Amethyst! In the go! Baby Below! Giselle! Ayo Aaron! Amaya! Jaden! Kendall! Scott up! Hey Chavo! We back up in this thing. Best storytelling podcast in the world. I don't think you know what it is, but uh, a narcotics officer was killed today. Serving a high risk warrant in Echo Park. He is survived by his wife and infant child. Shit gets deeper hey yo fuquat hey yo nick for those of you that have uh rode with us on this 323 voyage around the world i am billy surreals aka billow aka billow gordy aka the first 323 -er. The last three, two, three -er. The first of the Coke boys. The greatest liar on the place of this goddamn planet. And I stand here represented by a monument that we made with the gambler, the gangster. We back. Listen, man. Y'all don't know what's going on, so I got to get to this shit. I got to bring in one of my partners. Uh, he finna come rap with us. His name is Chavo. Goddamn Chavo. We done went through some shit. And it's time. It's due time. That this boy fly. And go ahead around the world. Shout out to the 96 Bulls. All the Lady Bulls. Shout out to. All the little Bulls out there. Shout out to the mutants. Oh baby listen. Let me tell you something. When I tell you. That y'all ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't seen. Nothing. Yet. Honestly, man, Chavo, I, I need you. I can't do it without you. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta ride with me on this one. Talk to me, man. You ready to fly? Chavo is uh, one of Don J's closest friends, man. We've been rocking. We've been putting this movie, Cocaine and Mirrors, together. You've seen the mutants come together. Um, hey, yo, big shouts out to Aaron. Uh, I love you, girl. I couldn't have got that last episode out that you guys saw. And there's others that she did. Big shouts out to my boy Brick. But uh, this podcast was built off one thing. Love. This podcast was built off one thing. Transparency. There's a whole lot of 323 shit going on. Um. Uh, E, let me tell you what uh I learned. So I gotta lead this here in this space. When me and Aaron got together, we started Oh man, so full of fury, bro. Let me tell you dog. This shit popped off with like so much energy. Like um uh, 
I mean, I don't know what to tell you, you know. Dude, you think that cocaine wasn't around? You, you goddamn right it was. You partied like a motherfucker. But the funny part was is that, uh, man, two beautiful ass souls, bro. Two wounded ass warriors of people who've been loving and trying and trying to make shit work out. Decided to get into a relationship. And, uh, man, when I tell y'all, I've had some of the happiest times to really tr truly help heal some dark ass moments and bring me out of here. Bro, your boy was lost. They pulled your boy out of there. And, um, boy, was that shit a crazy ass ride. So let's clear some shit up. Lighten the mood around this bitch. Um, when me and Aaron got together, I had no idea that I had two kids coming. I gotta, I gotta say that now. So my kids didn't come from me cheating on Aaron. And when we got together, we had no fucking clue. Y'all seen the goddamn post. Happy! God damn it, we was happy. Shit, we all at Thanksgiving. Edges laid down, kids smiling. I'm getting haircuts. You know a nigga gotta be happy when you cut the side of this beard right here and then say, fuck it, you know what? I'm there. Uh, a lot of, oh man, I was happy, bad, satisfied. Fucking a lot. A lot, a lot. Loving a lot. Great with my kids. Um, it, uh, it was crazy because she jumped in here and just jumped right in the fight with trying to get shit together. I had Emmy and Indigo um, by myself. And I'm here in Houston, man, trying to make this shit happen. Uh, shit, I was I was up to my eyes in spinning around the world. And. Like, bro, when I tell you she jumped in and helped the nigga out, it was crazy. Aaron, Dunjay, every day trying to help me get shit together around here. Um, Donjay believed in me so much. Uh, you saw him on the last episode, so he had been so excited about coming back to uh, do this podcast. A fan, like, not just a regular fan, 